Okay, so Chris asks, is animal protein or plant protein better? And this is in the context of our optimizing protein talk. And we're trying to figure out, you know, as we're getting there, as far as consuming protein and foods and powders and things like that, like what is the best way to go? I think it's no surprise to y'all that animal foods are always going to be superior to plant foods as far as protein, because there's several different ways that we can look at that. Um, a while back, we did this talk on nutritional vitality, where we assess foods based on their nutrient sufficiency and their toxicity levels and how they contribute to metabolic efficiency. Animal foods contain complete bioavailable nutrition. They have all the essential amino acids plus all the other amino acids. They have essential fatty acids. They have very bioavailable minerals and vitamins, uh, fat-soluble nutrients, and they have very minimal toxicity because they resemble so much of what we are as animals. Um, they have some nutrients that are not found in plants. So vitamin B12, vitamin D3, vitamin K2. Um, and uh, there's some nutrients that are, there's very little of them, if any, in plants that we think are just superfoods. Okay, so things like creatine, carnitine, choline, powerhouse, and then taurine and carnosine. And these are all uh, uh, found in high amounts in animal foods. So th those are all some pluses for animal foods. Um, plus, most of us are aware of the fact that in plant foods, we have what is known as um, Anti-nutrients, okay? So anti-nutrients um, have different effects depending on the type of anti-nutrient they are. You know, some phytic acids uh, actually inhibit the absorption of different nutrients and minerals because it's trying to hold on to those nutrients for the growing plant. Um, now, a way you can mitigate that is, of course, through cooking and sprouting and fermenting, but it's still a, a tick against plant foods and their bioavailability. Um, also, uh, you know, we have different versions of nutrients in plants um, that are not what we're looking for in animal foods. So a lot of times, you know, we hear things like, you know, uh, carrots have a lot of vitamin A. They don't have a lot of vitamin A. They have a lot of beta carotene, which is a precursor to vitamin A, but a lot of humans don't have the ability to convert beta carotene into vitamin A. Whereas when we consume animal foods, we're getting retinol. We're getting the animal version of vitamin A that is very well absorbed by humans. Um, iron is very different in plants. So non-heme iron um, is not something that's very absorbable, whereas the heme iron uh, that we find in animal foods is very absorbable. Uh, D3 is the animal-based version of vitamin D. Plants contain D2. Um, uh, plants contain vitamin K1, and there's some benefits of vitamin K1 in the human system, um, but K2 is the powerhouse that we're looking for, the fat-soluble nutrient that we're looking for, um, and it's only available in animal foods, or sometimes if you ferment some vegetables, you'll get some K2. All right, so... Uh, and then when we talk about protein and digestibility, um, there have been a lot of different ways that uh, digestibility has been measured, but the most accurate and recent one is the dis digestible indispensable amino acid score. Um, uh, for isolated proteins here, we got a chart of different things. And you'll notice if you take time to look at this chart, you can pause the video and you'll see the majority of the things that are absorbed the best are animal based which makes sense because we're talking about humans. We are animals. We do great with direct nutrient to nutrient assimilation. Uh, plants are going to have these anti-nutritional factors that can kind of mess things up a little bit. Okay, so, so the answer to this question, animal foods are always going to be superior compared to plant foods. Now, some of us, you know, just may not <laughs> want to consume animal foods. Uh, you know, we have some members of our community that are uh, kind of vegetarian and or vegan skewed, um, which is totally fine. It's a personal decision. Um, so just the things we want to consider when we're consuming foods for nutritional value is the nutrient density of the food, the bioavailability of the nutrients, and the anti-nutrients that could be inhibiting the bioavailability. And that's something we always want to think about. All right, now, if we bring it back to some powders, you know, we don't have any information that I was able to find uh, as far as muscle protein synthesis from pea uh, protein isolate. But we did have this chart earlier where we had uh, whey isolate and we had soy and we had casein where, again, whey is just king. And if you're able to tolerate it, I think whey is the best protein powder to supplement with. Um, but then I also pulled Biotics uh, pea protein isolate powder. And if we look at a serving that would give you 25 grams of protein, which here I think they're saying it's about three scoops of it. Um, if we look at the amino acid profile, we are hitting the leucine amount that we need, which is two grams plus. Okay, so and then we also have the other essential amino acids in here. So as a plant based option, I think that pea protein isolate. Um, is a great choice. Um, it, so the, the reason that you would do this is because if you don't tolerate whey, if it gives you some kind of digestive discomfort or you have some other reactions to it, or and or if you're uh, kind of plant-based and you 
and you're just doing the plant-based thing, you know, because we, again, we have some members that do that. And we've seen great results with the pea protein isolate for those people. But if, you know, if all things being equal, I would say animal foods, whey isolate would be superior. If you're skewing uh, towards the vegan plant-based and pea protein isolate would be the best choice, in my opinion, because uh, soy protein is going to have anti-nutrients that we, we're trying to avoid. Um, but this is also another argument for if you're leaning in this direction of vegetarian or vegan, uh, the essential amino acid supplements would be really, really beneficial.